This seminar will look at creative visualization and for our subject we'll use time-based art. So time-based art involves recording the subject of time visualized in predetermined or spontaneous form. In the fine art arena in particular, a record or performance or installation can take the form either as a photograph or a video. Finally, after the performance is finished, the record often serves as the final outcome. So temporal work created through photography, film or video can be published as an edition or displayed in a gallery, a site, specific setting or even a book. So we'll go through a few examples um, and try to show different versions of how artists have dealt with recording uh, time-based work. Here's Robert Longo, he's a painter and he has a series of paintings called, very famous series called Men in Cities, which he created from photographs he took posing his friends. But if you look at the photographs themselves, they're quite art pieces uh, in themselves. So this is an interesting one of where the research material uh, they actually became artworks in themselves. Earlier on, uh, one of the precursors of performance art was East Clean, and he was a very conceptual uh, artist who was interested in um, recording movement particularly, and how those marks become art in, in, in the end. So here he has a series of him jumping off a building and they're designed for an arts newspaper before the inter, uh, internet, obviously. Uh, artists used different formats, printed formats, to record, have recordings of their work and things. So the layout here uh, is interesting in that. Here's Chris Burden, a very dramatic piece where he fired shots at a 747. It's called 747. The artwork in this uh, instance is images of him doing uh, the performance. So when we talk about the significance of this in the history of art, we're looking at the images, the documentary images that now exist as art pieces themselves. Famously, Jackson Pollock, the painter, the action painter, whose energy was kind of embodied, as they say, into the canvas that he painted. Here's him in the studio. But on the right here is William Wegeman 20 years ago. So what we're discussing here in this image is how do we record the essence of, of both artists' work? Well, one was a traditional painter being recorded for a magazine such as Time magazine. And the other image here is produced as an art piece itself. On the left, we have a record of Jackson Pollock painting. And on the right, we have an image that only works when its title is read out. And its title is, For a Moment He Forgot Where He Was and Jumped Into the Ocean. There's no image of an ocean here. There's nothing but an artist in his studio. And uh, he's saying by the relationship and how we, uh, the relationship with the te text and the image and how we appro approach the image, um, our mind actually fills in the blank. So he's quite playful. Um, we've been trained to accept almost through the media that the image of the less is a very important uh, record of um, an artist, a, a serious artist at work. Here's a student and um, a very simple and a nice image of two images put together. And the project here was um, how space changes during a dance routine. So the student who was a dancer uh, as well, uh, put movements uh, against a wall, put her hand movements against a wall and worked with shadows to create this image. And she's created a neat rationale explaining why she did very uh, in a very uh, succinct sentence and also the technical details how she did it. At the beginning of first year, this is very important to have it in. So this artist here, interestingly, is going from flat to flat looking for her own place. And she's made a series of portraits documenting it. But there's also a bit of performance here as well as she has her expression. Uh, you're encouraged to read in what, what, what she's thinking about there. And she's taking a self-portrait using the self-portrait uh, technique of a, a wire attached to the camera. You can see how uh, beautifully composed it is. And also the color scheme is very effective as well. It shows a real kind of domestic flat environment. Here's a student taking up from that um, uh, example to visualize their own version of travel. Um, and travel 
is embodied uh, by the metaphor of the suitcase here. So her work um, on this brief was basically using different types of lights to illustrate um, the, the project. So on the left is a, a really composed with um, a kind of almost nighttime lighting. Uh, something you might see out in the street maybe, but there's a bit of strangeness because there's a light inside. And on the right, what we have is a um, uh, just a moving, uh, a, a slow shutter speed where the uh, suitcase is just being moved. Together, they work well together. You know, one is not obviously better or more in demand than the other. The other, um, both of them work together, is basically what I'm trying to say. Here's an artist going through a tunnel. Uh, movement is static here, taken from the windscreen of the car. Um, there's a hint of the driver there, um, or it could be a hint of a, a passenger in the back. There's all this kind of mystery going on. And you can see what's in focus and what's not. The end is in focus. That's kind of significant. Where the artist puts something in focus, directs the eye towards it and suggests what the artist wants to say. Vito Conchi, um, documenting chance. So this is a good example from the history of uh, performance art where these artists um, created records of the performance. And in the end, uh, the records became art pieces themselves. He walked through a forest. Every time he stopped, he took an image. So he also uses text to kind of convey the exercise he was doing it to make, much, make it much more than a scientific exercise um, and to convey a little bit of a strangeness of, of his endeavors as well. And you can see on the right, um, his notes here. And, you know, talking about scrapbooks and how we visualize work here, um, these are art pieces. They look like scrapbooks, but these are art pieces. So we can draw from the design from them as well for how, if we undertook examples like this, um, how, we, how we sketch them up. His famous one is following people, following pieces to see where people go in New York City. As soon as they go into a building, he stops the actual exercise. And he makes these strange maps based on the people he followed. This artist here um, is engaging with nature and movement is involved here. And the recording of movement is here by literally throwing a rock into a stream after he's etched his fingerprints on it. So you'd really need to be there to appreciate the end of this project and what he started with it. But instead we have four images. So you follow them in sequence and you can see the rock is now joined with the other rocks. Here's a photographic sculpture, we could call it, because she's taken images, the artist has taken images and she's exploring inanimate and animate objects, parts of the body, stones, feet, eyes, and then creating this structure that makes you look at one part of it uh, and the other, you know. So Boyd Webb, um, here we have the artist using the studio to create fantastical kind of dreamlike sequences where he uh, takes the images of what he set up and then d dismantles it. So these are sculptures in a sense, but they're photographic uh, sculptures because uh, only the photograph exists of it. <laughs> Faisal and West are probably the most famous um, uh, exemplars of this. Artists who spend who spent a lot of time in the studio just making these strange balancing sculptures. Uh, movement was taken in uh, many different forms and in these ones here the examples chosen are to show the tension that you can get uh, creating these sculpture from uh, temporary sculptures from uh, everyday objects um, have a think on what suits uh, color and what suits black and white uh, black and white is more graphic it gets to the um, it, it, as you can see from the right it makes um, use of the shadows and the color on the left makes use of the color of the objects something very traditional using an old uh, analog process um, to have the very very detailed um, result uh, black and white image here the artist here has taken a picture of the sea and the, and, and the horizon the detail uh, because of the process they used um, is very very fine um, and it kind of it what the artist is trying to convey and convey is an important um, work uh, is, is stillness timelessness another conceptual angle on this uh, using almost the same uh, 
point of view, but for a different, completely different, in completely different context, um, is Anne Collier, who took images of the sea where her parents, at separate times, the ashes had been scattered. And then she's thinking about memory and how we record memory and the impossibility of recording memory. So her solution was to print up images, put them in a box, like we store things, and then photograph that box. Keeping still. Uh, how can you keep still for an hour? Well, that's something that Gillian Waring wanted to explore in her video piece, which you might be mistaken as thinking as a, a still photograph if you walked into a gallery and saw it. It's actually a video screen showing um, people for an hour standing still. So that's an interesting way of actually when you're being confronted uh, in a gallery when you're looking at something and you have to stand and wait and see and all the curiosity that's involved in looking at that so it's a neat exercise and there's a strangeness about it if you if you actually experience it in real time so interestingly the costuming why she picked the the police uh, force rather than another group of people it was a deliberate reference to the use of photography by the police and the authorities who profess images in an effort to fix identity for various surveillance systems so here's a fun example uh, of a series of photographs exploring the symbolic rituals and social roles expected of western society one image wouldn't have done it justice it needed five Another fun example, um, but uh, interesting from a journey point of view, is taking 50, um, uh, sorry, 100 boots across America, where you finally end up, uh, as the artist did in the Museum of Modern Art, where she showed the, the, the boots, but she also showed a series of postcards that she made um, tracking uh, her journey and the boots' journey across um, America. And she sent out a 1,000 of these uh a series of 51 postcards she sent them around to a thousand addresses depicting 50 pairs of rubber boots traveling across the um the us so 100 boots 50 pairs trying to capture temporary in the sense of a breath being uh, left on a mirror so the artist is actually hinting at a, a few things here and one of them is the idea of death the idea of breath leaving your body when you die A famous piece of land, uh, landscape art, Robert Smithson, and this is a documentary image, a very significant piece of work where um, artists in the 60s and 70s took it out of the gallery and used the environment itself as the basis for their artwork. We can see echoes of this in, in a lot of Pinterest type uh, images where artists are working with nature and there's an inclination to make a kind of pretty picture. Uh, something kind of uh, that would be eye-catching on that. So it's important to know the difference between the two. Be, in research, be careful not to equate pictorial solutions uh, that you're familiar with from social media. Actually, context is really what you need to explore and make your reference to. So when an artist records work, it's the context really they're trying to communicate. So some fun examples here of the artist using a, a, a glass box and putting it in different situations. Um, so what he's trying to do here is he's trying to make the background relate to either in colour or shape or form to what's in the boxes. Um, Jeff Wall is a very um, conceptual artist who deals a lot with, um, I suppose, pictorial representation coming from a kind of classical painting uh, research background. And here he's looking at what, what we accept. What do we accept when we see a, 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 a funeral uh, environment and a cemetery? Well, the last thing we would expect was a load of um, material that you would find in a South Sea corral um, environment under the sea. So uh, there's a, he created a living marine ecosystem and photographed it over a year in his studio in a glass in a setup. And then you combine the images digitally. So the street sea creatures are digitally uh, put into this um, image here of the um, cemetery, which you wouldn't get at first glance. So it's the disconnect. Um, the, the image plays in the juxtaposition between what is expected from each environment. 
So on digital terms, we're very familiar with these kind of surreal, um, very finished, very polished images. They're very seductive images. But again, keep in mind um, what the audience is for them. A lot of these, um, as pretty as they are, are exercises to show off the artist's digital skills, which is good in those contexts as well. So we can get as dramatic as we want. Uh, Oliver Elson is actually using uh, strobe lighting here to freeze water. So when you walk into the environment, you see this. So it's a document, it's a technical document, but it's also a document um, that records his intention. He's an environmental based uh, artist. So he uses a lot of traditional materials, temporary situations and things like that. But this obviously says you should be there to see it. Something similar, but from a different perspective is encasing flowers in ice. And this is quite, this is almost set up to be for a photograph, to be a quite uh, mysterious kind of almost magical fairy tale uh, uh, portrait, I think, of, of his installation. And here's Laurie Arneson, she's performing. And when the ice melts, she will stop performing. So this is just a document on that. It's just to say, again, definitely you'd need to be there to experience what was that. But to know what the image was, um, this is the kind of, you know, photographs have to be taken no matter what kind of time-based um, artwork has been performed or created. Um, a lot of it now is, as it ever was, uh, it's important to record it appropriately. So... Take from all those um, in uh, examples there, you can slow this down and have a read of the text as well. Uh, and just keep in mind that it's how you communicate what you do. It can be as serious as you want. It can be as detailed as you want. It could be in a series, it can be a video, um, or it could just be something you've come across like this. Nick Turpin is photographing marks made by boy wasers every, every Sunday uh, on, the, on the tarmac. <laughs> 